Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna focus on fragrances that are cloud-like, they're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. There's something about them that's like light and pillowy to me. They might also be creamy, so they're not just exclusively like light and marshmallowy. There might be a couple of fragrances in here that are denser, but there's something about them that reminds me of marshmallows and fluffy things and clouds. I know it's the middle of summer. We've done our beach video and our tropical florals video I thought I would switch it up and try something different and I've really been into these fragrances I wear them to bed and I also wear them sometimes just around the house I do work from home in an air-conditioned environment and I don't always want to wear a beach fragrance during the day although those are in heavy rotation right now all of my beach and tropical fragrances are definitely making a heavy appearance this summer, but when they fade away, I wanna wear something different, or on occasion, I like to just insert a different kind of fragrance into the rotation. So look, before we get started, I need your opinion. I'm filming for, on a new phone that is supposed to be ultra high resolution high definition. So I need you to tell me, is this too much? Like, are you seeing every single flaw in my skin? Is it like way too realistic? I remember when we first got a high definition television, like back in the day, and you could actually see actors skin, like the texture on their skin, it kind of freaked me out. So let me know if you're freaked out and I'll switch it back to the other. But we're gonna get kicked off with Kiss Me Intense from Nikolai Parfums. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration, but here's my one little complaint about this one because it is super duper pretty. It doesn't last the longest, but boy is this a pretty fluffy, powdery even kind of a fragrance slightly it has that marshmallow thing going on there's almond in here there's vanilla and heliotrope heliotrope can be a little almondy and it can also come across a little powdery depending on how it sits in the composition there's a slight hint of citrus in the opening of this mostly this is a fragrance that i wear when i want to have like that cozy sweater feeling or here in the summertime after i've showered and I'm just lounging around the house or as a bedtime scent when I want to just feel cozy and cocooned, but it's not like a heavy wintertime fragrance, although I would wear it in the winter for sure. In the base of this, there's vanilla and musk. And this, it's just very, very pretty, very light, very appropriate for summer. If, this, if you want to wear something like this, say on a rainy day that has a little bit more of a cozy feel than like your summertime feel, this is a great option. Kiss Me Intense. Another fragrance that is known as a marshmallow fragrance because it is a marshmallow <laughs> fragrance is Delizia de Marshmallow from Kais Perfumes. So, you know, I've talked about the bottle and how much I dislike that, but the fragrance inside is just lovely. This is sugar and marshmallow and vanilla. I tell you, this smells just like marshmallows. If you think about the sort of powdery covering that's on a marshmallow, that's a good idea of what this smells like but underneath that, it also smells like when you go to an ice cream shop and they open up the refrigerator part where you can sort of get a whiff of the fragrance, the fragrances. <laughs> When they open up the refrigerator and you can kind of get a whiff of the tubs of ice cream that they have, what the vanilla would smell like in there. So imagine like the powdery aspect of a marshmallow with hints of vanilla ice cream way in the distance. That like fresh, creamy, yummy kind of scent is what you get out of here. And it's long lasting too. You'll spray it on and you'll think it doesn't project a lot, but it does and other people can smell it. So Delizia de Marshmallow by Kais, great option for a fluffy fragrance, really year round, but how lovely in the summer. Again, especially on rainy days. Would I wear this on a sunny, hot day? Sure, you know, I'd wear anything, anytime, anywhere, but especially lovely on overcast days and certainly in the evenings and as a bedtime scent or a lounging around in your pajamas kind of a scent. Next, I'll go to a fragrance that I just adore and really need to pull for more often. I don't show it the love that it needs, but every time I pull it out and sniff it, I just adore how beautiful this is. It's C. Fiori. I have heard some people say they don't like this, and I just don't understand that. I think this is probably one of the prettiest fragrances in my collection. It has that C DNA in that it has like a strong black currant, sweet, sweet, sweet berry juice at the top. 
and some citrus when it opens. As it starts to dry down, more of the rose comes through, but throughout the body of the fragrance, this has this cloud-like thing from vanilla and from musk. And I think it just makes it one of the girliest, prettiest, most ballerina fragrances that I have. Not to mention that the bottle is this incredible pale pink, which definitely for me evokes like a ballet slipper kind of a thing, or even like, I don't know, almost like, and I don't mean this in like a sexual way, but a negligee, like a pink negligee. That's what this reminds me of absolutely gorgeous fragrance. I can't get enough of it. I know that it doesn't last the super longest. It's decent in projection, decent in longevity, not a beast mode kind of a fragrance. I wish it was because this is by far one of the prettiest fragrances in my collection with this beautiful, light, airy, cloud-like texture. A fragrance that I don't own, but I hope to soon. And maybe I will get crazy after this video and just pull the trigger on this one and another one in this line. It's Mercurial Cashmere from Electimus. It's gotten a lot of hype here on YouTube. I reviewed it in a video where I talk about my opinion on popular fragrances. And I said, is it full bottle worthy or not? And this is one that I definitely thought was full bottle worthy. There's something really sweet and fluffy and just very, very feminine about this. There's a tuberose rose note in there. There's, I think it's a violet note. And in the base, you get tonka bean, cashmere wood, and musk. I think this is one of the most cloud-like fragrances I've ever sampled and love the bottle as well and would love to get it in my collection. I'm also eyeballing, I think it's called, pronounced Trajan or Trajan. And lots of people have hyped that up here on YouTube, including Marcy, if you're watching, I'm going to blame it on you. Marcy at Marcelina Teresa here on YouTube. If I buy the bottle, it's definitely going to be her fault because she had a really, really great story about it in a video that she did recently. I'll link that down below. For the next fragrance, I only have the oil perfumery version and I have a travel spray of it. I don't have a full bottle, but it's Princess by Killian. The formal name is I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess, but people just call it princess. I believe it's been put into a new package. So anyway, this fragrance, I would not buy the full bottle. I would advise you to go ahead and get a dupe of it. The reason being that the full bottle version, at least for me, the sample that I tried and the travel spray that I have, they don't last the longest. I find that my oil perfumery version lasts longer. But anyway, it is a really nice, again, like a powdery, fluffy kind of fragrance that has this like marshmallow effect. It has a hint of a tea note in there and just the slightest bit of citrus and green, like, like a sploosh. Like, like just a little, like a pinch. Like if you take a pinch of salt and psh, it just has the slightest hint of that. Mostly you get like this musky and powdery, light, fluffy kind of uh, close to the skin, uh, very feminine smell. But it's light. It's not, you know, it's one that could be worn all year round also, but probably really great for the summer if you like those kind of cozy sweater fragrances, but you want like a light version of it for the summer. This one would probably be safe to wear out during the day. This is a fragrance that's a bit on the pricier side. There are some nice dupes that I can tell you about, and it's Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian. I'm glad to have this bottle. I don't know that I would repurchase it because I think there are some really lovely dupes by Dua, by Alt, although I haven't tried the Alt one. I've heard it was good. Be Layered has a nice one, and Okcha, I would say. Th those four you can check out. I can vouch for the Be Layered one being really nice and for Okcha. So this to me is like a wall of big fluffy cotton balls. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of, like cotton balls soaked in an osmanthus oil. Osmanthus has this apricotty, fruity scent to it. It also comes across a little bit citrus to my nose. This also has uh, white florals in it. There's tuberose in here. I don't think that it's tuberose dominant. I have to sniff and go, yes, that's a, a tuberose in there. It's not the kind of thing where it's a tuberose that knocks you out and hits you right in the face. For those of you that are anti-tuberose, but it's a fluffy, lovely fragrance with a little bit of a woodiness in the base. It's just like it's a wall of cotton balls is all that I can say. Now, in terms of longevity on this, it depends. If I am moisturized, this is a good, moderate longevity and decent projection off of me. If I'm dry, my skin is dry, it can fade a little bit quicker. But I really, really enjoy this fragrance. Um, not super crowd-pleasing in this house. There's something about this that I think is off-putting to some of the men in my house in particular, but I enjoy this. I think it is fluffy and fun. 
Speaking of Dua, I have an original Dua that I'd like to share and it'll probably show up in a vanilla video and it'll probably show up in like a lactonic fragrances video because it's all of that and it's fluffy to me as well. And it's Alexandra Short. This fragrance has some awesome notes that I wanna make sure to read to you so I do not forget. Caramelized vanilla sugar, vanilla milk. It has vanilla cake, whipped cream, vanilla and white musk and some rose and bergamot peel. Well, now that I look at, you know, it's interesting when you read notes, <laughs> you smell something, you think to yourself, oh yeah, I do get that. This is a really sweet, almost like a spun sugar, light spun sugar kind of a fragrance. When I see whipped cream, when I see vanilla cake, yes, I can think about all of that here, but my immediate thoughts about this was almost like the sugar that you put on a funnel cake, the confectioner's sugar, something like that with a hint of florals, a hint of the rose in there. As this settles down, it stays more on the sugary, more lactonic side, but is fluffy and light and fun to me. I really enjoy this Alexandra Short. I think this is a newer duo release too, if I'm not mistaken. An underrated gem of a fragrance is Satin by Lalique. It reminds me a lot of the feeling that you have when you run your hand over a very fluffy sweater or a faux fur blanket or anything like that that has like, like imagine like the hood of a jacket that has the faux fur around it and you kind of run your hand. There's something fluffy. That's the word of the day and I've used it a million times at this point. Um, there's something fluffy and powdery about this. It definitely has heliotrope at the top. There's a sandalwood in the base. So it's this nice juxtaposition between the softness of the powderiness of this and the creaminess and depth of the sandalwood in here. There's a touch of white florals in here and then in the middle it has tonka bean and it has vanilla. It's a fragrance that also reminds me of Ballerina Tool. I know I've used the word ballerina before when talking about Sea Fiori. Same thing here, like the way that Tool smells. I know that sounds kind of weird, but have you ever smelled Tool that has a person has worn and they had some perfume on or something like that? There's just like the lightest hint of the fragrance left on the Tool and the Tool feels super like fluffy. No other word for it, it's the texture of something soft and furry is what this kind of reminds me of. Very, very light fragrance, very soft, very close to the skin. Excellent bedtime fragrance. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Underrated and super affordable. This fragrance has gotten a lot of airtime on my channel over the last couple of months, mostly because the bottle is hideous. <laughs> and yet I kind of like it. And I love, love, love the fragrance inside. It is Eternia Woman in this ridiculous cigarette lighter bottle. This is by Armoff, and this is said to be a dupe for Poison Girl. Beautiful. One of the most cloud-like fragrances that I have. There's a gorgeous citrus powdery opening to it. There's an almond in the middle. There's tonka bean and sandalwood in the base. It is girly, everything pretty, all, you know, sugar spice and everything nice kind of girly. It's not spicy. It's not sugary, but it is sweet. It is citrusy for a while. And then it's mostly just probably from the Tonka bean, super duper sweet and fluffy and lovely and easy to wear and kind of dreamy. It's a very dreamy fragrance. Another super affordable fragrance, like in the 20 something dollar range. And I just love it. I'd wear this all year round, uh, and all day and all night. It's either one. It's a really, really pretty fragrance. Ignore this ridiculous bottle. <laughs> My 90s fragrance lovers, you remember Hane Mori. This is the Eau de Toilette concentration. I have tried the EDP. I don't quite remember what that smells like, except that it was thicker and denser. This one here smells like, stay with me here. It's not quite like a cotton. There's a, it's a, it's some kind of synthetic stuffing. It's not cotton, but it's stuffing that you put into fabric when you want it to have some fluff, but you want it to be squishy. It's kind of hard to describe, and I'm sure there's a name for it. And if I find a picture, I will insert it here. But that's what this reminds me of. In the opening, there's a strawberry and some berry notes, but it's a very sort of synthetic kind of almost unripened strawberry smell. You've ever opened a container of strawberries that were really freshly picked. They are, are not really ripened up yet. There's that like real light, bright, 
strawberry smell. It's the same kind of strawberry note that's in Burberry Her EDP, that same kind of a thing. In the middle here, there are white and yellow roses, a lang a lang, rose, peony, jasmine, and then a little bit of woodiness in the base. But by and large, this has that really super light, synthetic, filling kind of a texture to it. You have to be in the mood for, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're not, but if you are, it makes you feel light and bright and girly and pretty. Honey Mori. I have also a fragrance that I refer to as a heavy white musk. It's actually not that heavy, but it's definitely like white in terms of what the color behind it would look like. The bottle is also white and it's a very musky fragrance, but it's a, uh, the musk is light in texture. It's not like a heavy, overwhelming musk and it's Zhivago, the gift le cadeau. The cadeau, which means the gift. Now this sits in a base that looks like a cliff, like a white cliff side. And I don't have that right this second. I didn't want to pull it out of the shelf, but the bottle comes out of the base, obviously. So this is a fragrance that has musk at the top and musk in the bottom. I tell you, since I've had this, this has become a richer, more interesting fragrance. When I first purchased it, I liked it. I did a full dedicated video review on this. As I'm coming back to visit it, I find it to be a little bit denser than when I originally tried it but still light and fluffy enough for this category musk in the top musk in the base there's a peach at the top and there's also a basil note which I find really interesting and I think it gives it a slight very ever so slight masculine lean like a traditional men's aftershave kind of a thing in the same way that Libra why YSL does not the intense version but the regular version now that version is to me a lot stronger and more powerful but just imagine like the lavender thing that's happening in there that gives it like that ever so slight masculine thing is a little bit of what's happening with the basil in here hard to describe but that's the best that I can do in the middle here you have rose and there are white florals like lily of the valley which makes this this really sort of clean feeling fragrance and then vanilla and musk in the base which I tell you Probably one of my muskiest fragrances, but the musk is also like thin in texture is the best that I could describe it. It would rise high in the air like the highest clouds in the sky. There's a name for those kinds of clouds way up in the high the sky, the wispy ones. Those clouds is what this reminds me of. The next one is often compared to Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. And with good reason, because it does smell a lot like it, but I prefer this one because it has even more character and depth in that one. Nobile 1942 Perdizione. Whew. This is not one that's popular in this house. It's a very particular kind of a smell. I think it's gorgeous. It is like a bunch of veils. Okay, so when we're talking about fluffy here, we're talking about like like tulle veils, whatever that thing is that you make veils, okay? That kind of a, a, a material sprayed with orange blossom, sprayed with neroli, a touch of lavender, some other citruses, musk. I love also that there's a woody base to this. There's cedar in it, but it stays sweet with vanilla. This is sweet and it's citrus and it's a slight touch herbal all at the same time and definitely very cloud-like in nature. It's like a mist of delicious like orange blossom neroli gorgeousness all around you when you wear this. Pretty strong spray lightly on this and this bottle is the exceptional edition. That's why it comes in the blue bottle. That's I think the only difference that usually comes in a clear bottle. I love this stuff. Very strong, very potent and I enjoy it better than Love Don't Be Shy, which is a gorgeous fragrance, by the way, but this is, I prefer more. I have two more for you, and this next one, I, when I first got it, I admit that I bought it because it's part of a line that I love so much, and when I first got it, I thought, this is okay, not sure what the hype is about, but then as I wore it and I let it warm up on my skin, I came to know the beauty that it is and have treasured it ever since, and I finally learned how to pronounce it if you... <laughs> Look at my early videos. I have no clue what I'm saying. Iris Drage or Iris Drage. Better? <laughs> 
This is from the Maison Lancome line, which I am obsessed with. It's one of those lines, and I always joke around about reviewers like going head over heels over lines and buying them all. And you know, like how silly that is. I'm very silly about Maison Lancome, <laughs> with the exception of Roses Berberanza. That was a little bit rough for me on that, you know, gym sock opening. The actual fragrance itself is beautiful and maybe one day I'll go back to that. But I have just about all of the rest, minus maybe one or two that are discontinued or that I just don't want to get. Anyway, that's a little sidebar and I have a whole video on Maison Lancome's line if you would like. So, Iris Drage, let's talk about it. So I have this thing about the note Iris. Iris, I compare to starch, like a starch shirt. I don't starch clothes anymore. In fact, I seldom ever iron an article of clothing anymore, especially since COVID and I've gotten comfortable, you know, just like tumble drying something in the dryer and throwing it on. But back in the day when you had those crisp white shirts or any kind of work shirt, right? That had a collar and buttons and you ironed it. You know what I'm talking about? If you're an 80s kid, a 70s kid, or even a 90s kid, and starch was all the rage, you'd starch your shirt to perfection. It's not the smell of starch that reminds me of Iris. It's what starch does to a shirt. It makes it formal, it makes it crisp, it makes it clean. The thing about this fragrance, in addition to having that Iris, which is this formal to me, like a, a note that evokes structure and formality and good manners, it also has almond, which gives it this nice sort of sweet nuttiness. There's sugar in here, which again, adds a little bit of sweetness. Freesia, that to me leans more in that iris note direction. It's formal, it's structured, it's cold. But then in the base, you get a combination of vanilla, which is just, I mean, do we not all love vanilla? Maybe you don't, but I do. Oris, nice powdery, almost butteriness to it. A musk, an iso e super. This is like one of the fluffiest, most cloud-like fragrances that I have, but there's one that goes even farther. So by the way, this is a beauty. If you can get your hands on it, and what I just described, a purple, formal, fluffy, sweet fragrance. Sounds like those things don't go together, but they work in here. Try this one. Now, my fluffiest fragrance by far, and I have to describe what this evokes for me, the image. If you have flown through clouds and the, the first time that you did that and the plane goes up through the clouds and or descends through the clouds, especially if you flew as a younger, as a child, the amusement and amazement that you had that a plane could move so fluidly through what in the sky looks to be something more solid. Like we know, of course, scientifically what a cloud is made out of. The fact that a plane can move through a cloud is that feeling when you first kind of just, you knew that, but you did it and it was like, oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> That's what I think of when I spray this fragrance. It is Simone Kozak Sublime. Now, this is a beautiful, floral, very, very light in texture. Okay, like the thinnest clouds that you can imagine. This is almost, it's so, it's so light, it's almost elusive. It's like a ghost of a fragrance. And I don't mean that you don't smell it. I mean the, the texture of it is almost ghost-like, like an illusion of a fragrance. It's hard to describe. But what stands out most to me in here is the violet leaf note, which is at the same time like a deep blue in color and texture to me but also super light in terms of like buoyancy in the air. <laughs> it's a really hard thing to describe. This has a little bit of pepper and citrus in the opening, gardenia, jasmine, and violet leaf in the middle. I'm reading the notes to you because this is an elusive fragrance for me. In the base, there's heliotrope. I'm sure the heliotrope is adding to that fluffy powderiness that I get, cedar and patchouli. It's at the same time an incredibly simple fragrance, but also hugely complex, where you're sniffing yourself and trying to understand what you're smelling. Okay, perfectly safe for the office because it is not a loud fragrance, will not project heavily off of you. You will know what you smell like, you'll smell it on you and people close to you will. 
And like I said, something just so interesting and unique. Maybe I should have put this. Did I put it in my unique fragrances video? I don't remember, but if I didn't, it should have been in there. Something about that violet leaf note in particular, I think makes this, with the heliotrope and like lightness of this, makes this one of the most interesting fragrances. So folks, that concludes my video on fluffy, light, sugary, clout-like kinds of fragrances. And I hope you enjoyed, would love to hear any contributions that you'd like to make, any recommendations that you have for viewers. Appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care, my friends. A slight hint of citrus of, the, of, of this. I reviewed it as a sample in a fragrance. I reviewed it in a video on, <laughs> you know, the guy on the internet that does the meat and he takes the salt and it's like that with, this <laughs> stop or i don't need a prince by my side to be a what is it called